Hi y'all, Darla here with Growing Tropical. Welcome back to the second part of my decorating the front porch area for fall. If um, I am really super excited actually to um, be doing this second part because this is the fun part. This is the part where you actually get to plant the flowers. And not only that, but if you saw in the first part of this video, um, my husband was, um, fixing all the window boxes to the front of the house. And uh, we just kind of skirted through that a little bit so you guys could see what we were doing um, in the areas that we were putting the window boxes in. And what we're gonna be doing, or what I'm gonna be doing actually in this video is gonna be concentrating on this particular window box for right now. And then in a couple of maybe later videos, I'll take you around and show you as I plant the other window boxes up. But for right now, this one was my focus because what I wanna do is I wanna get um, this planted up and, and all decorated up here for fall. And I gotta tell you, living here in um, South Florida in a zone 10, trying to find fall, fla or fla fall plants has been a little bit of a challenge. We don't really have, um, I looked all over for like pumpkins and stuff like, like real fresh pumpkins. And um, they don't really start coming out until, I don't know if it's in the cooler months that they have them there or not, but here um, they probably won't come out until mid or even the end of September. So um, anyway, that's okay because um, I don't necessarily need to have them right now. But as for the plants, any type of, of uh, plant, any kind of like fall plant, like for say, for example, the chrysanthemums or the marigolds, those require like a, a pretty good sun, a, a, like anywhere from like four to six hours of sun. And the area up here does not get that kind of sun. So I really needed to um, find some plants that maybe mimicked a little bit of a fall look. And I can nestle in maybe some, um, some pumpkins, you know, whether they be faux pumpkins or real pumpkins as time goes on. But what I, what I had to do was I had to focus on plants that maybe mimicked a little bit of the fall and, and that's okay because I think I think I did okay on it um, for example um, I'm gonna just kind of go through and show you some of the things that I picked out some of these may change a little bit I think for the most part this is what I'm gonna be putting in up here but I may just um, either I don't necessarily know that I'm gonna omit but I may add something a little bit later on I thought about maybe if I could find like a begonia or something like that and actually I do have a begonia but these guys uh, they're kind of hard to get to bloom I've had them bloom before but they're not easy to get to bloom like just a regular standard begonia. So um, I thought about maybe if I could find one that had a little bit more of an orangey tone to it, that I might tuck a couple in there because begonias do take a little bit more of the shade. But um, anyway, back to um, the window box. Um, let me go ahead and just talk to you guys a little bit about what I have in here. So first of all, um, we've got um, on either end, I have uh, cordy lines. These are, I call them Dracaena, but Dracaena, Cordyline, and I believe they're classified as the Kiwi, and they are very, very pretty, and I thought they reminded me um, a little bit of fall and the fact that they kind of look like corn, you know, at the like when you have corn husks or corn stalks or whatever, they kind of give that that little bit of that vibe, a little bit of a fall vibe, so I thought these were real pretty, and I thought they would anchor the ends of this um, this planter box, and um, not to mention, you know, the planter box itself is like a real nice dark brown, so I thought it would really pick that color up real pretty, too, so so um, then the other things on moving on, I've got two um, sweet potato vines in the chartreuse color. They also, if I didn't say the Dracaena or these Cordyline, they will tolerate um, they will tolerate the shade that, that's up here. And so will the sweet potato vine. Um, they, it'll get a little, like I said, it'll get a little bit of a dappling sun up here, but it won't be like an intense sun. And it's a really super, super bright light up here. So I think that the, the Dracaena and the sweet potato vine will be fine. And then, um, um, the other two things that I have in here are the um, these are elephant ears. These are the, um, I believe it's pronounced Amazonica, Am Amazonica, Amazonica. <laughs> I, I'm not real sure. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a list of all these plants that I have in this box. I'm going to go ahead and list them um, on the bottom of this on the bottom of this video, so that way you guys can actually see the names of them, the proper names and everything of these. But um, anyway, um, I bought two of these guys and I thought they were kind of cool because they, they kind of look a little bit like um, maybe Halloween-ish. <laughs> so we, you know, we're going to be going into the fall, you know, into October 1st or whatever, or October, the month of October, I should say, and Halloween's going to come well before Thanksgiving. So I thought it might be kind of cool to put a little bit of a Halloween vibe in here. I don't know if that's, if it does look like that to you guys, but to me, it kind of looks skeletonish or whatever. And they're really cool. My only concern with these two guys is the fact that these guys really do like to have a really super wet, wet soil. So I'm really kind of hoping that it's, um, that I'm going to be able to keep them. I, I'm hoping with everything in here, I'm going to be able to keep everything just 
like not too wet, not too dry, but like right, just a nice happy balance. And I'm hoping I'll be able to keep them all happy um, in here. But anyway, moving on. Um, the next thing I have is a, um, these are creeping, I believe these are creeping fig. Now this could get a little interesting because while my um, elephant ear polys here, while they do like to be super, super wet, the creeping fig does not like to be wet. It likes for you to let the soil dry out just a little bit. So again, that happy balance, it's gonna be interesting to do. But anyway, I thought these were kind of pretty in the fact that they drape over so pretty. Um, and I thought they just really picked up the coloring and everything of the um, chartreuse potato vine. And then the contrast of this um, poly elephant ear, I just thought that was just, the contrast was just really, really striking. And I wanted to have a little bit of, um, the lighter color to kind of draw your eye in. And when I stand back or whatever, it, it looks to me like it does do that. So anyway, these are the creeping fig. And then what I did was I popped in, and this is where I'm not real sure if I will maybe go and see if I could find another one, but this is an actual begonia. This guy, let me see if I can think, I have to grab my glasses here real quick. Let me see if I can pull him out of here and tell you exactly what kind of um, begonia he is. I saw him at, at the store, or at the nursery rather, and I just thought he was the coolest thing. I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy up there for just a half a second, but he is actually an angel wing begonia. Um, Sophia is the name of this. And um, I don't have a lot, a lot of experience with these types of begonias, but um, I know um, just, you know, from looking at YouTube, I believe it's Plantarina. She does a lot of the house plants and basically pretty much all of these are, with the exception of the sweet potato vine, I think basically these all could be classified as like house plants, but she grows some beautiful um, begonias. And um, so I've had a couple of them and I just don't, they don't seem to want to bloom for me, but if I'm not mistaken, I think that you have to really sock these with like, um, I want to say it's potassium. I can't remember. I'm going to put it on the top of the screen um, just to clarify to make sure that I'm right. But I believe it's like um, maybe a little extra, it's either potassium or, or magnesium, but I think it's potassium to get these guys to really bloom, um, bloom really nice for you. So I may end up doing that if it's, if it does really well for me in this planter box. But, and honestly, I don't really know what color the bloom is but really and truly y'all the the foliage is just so pretty on this that excuse me even if it doesn't bloom it's going to be absolutely beautiful but anyway um this is another one i believe that likes to have um, a nice moist soil not not like boggy but just a nice moist soil so anyway i've got right now i just have one of these um in here so um i'm going to go ahead and um like i said i may end up getting a second one i'm not real sure so let's see that's uh got all those we talked about that and then this last one right here this is actually and let me put my glasses on again this is so terrible I can't see anything anymore without my glasses close up but let me look and see here this one is actually called Junkus and this is um, I believe I've actually never grown this before this is um, I believe an ornamental grass when I look this up and this actually they said from what I was like Googling it, it said that they really like to grow like on the sides of like roads and just like out in the fields and um, they'll grow in rocky areas and they just, they get really, really quite, quite big and quite um, like tall and wide, but it's really not gonna be in this box long enough. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it said that it can really take over if you're not real careful. So um, I'm, I'm not, like I said, it won't be in the box long enough to really do anything like that. I just thought it was kind of cool because again it just kind of gave that fall vibe and I wanted something since I have the Dracaena at the end which are a little bit taller I wanted something in the middle and I'm going to put it like right in this area right here I wanted something that kind of stood up a little spiky in the center just to kind of give a little bit of interest there and I may I'm not sure this is again where I'm saying I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if I will you know maybe put one or two more in there um, as I get planting I'll just kind of have to see once what it starts looking like so anyway, that is what I'm going to be putting in, um, in this particular planter box. And um, what I want to do is um, I would like to go ahead and um, come back after, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stop the video and then I'm going to take all these plants out of here. And then I want to come back and I want to just talk to you real briefly about the window box and um, just a little bit about the functionality and where I bought it. Okay, y'all. This is what the window box looks like, completely empty. 
I think it's a very, very beautiful box. Actually, I wanted something um, when I purchased this. I looked um, all over the place just trying to find the right boxes for the front of the house. And I wanted something that just had a very simple, sleek design that didn't take away from, you know, the plants that I put in or from the front of the house. And I think um, I think I did a pretty good job here. It's a, um, the, the box is an espresso brown. This particular one is a 60 inch, um, 60 inches in length. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that it's 10 inches deep so that'll be a really really um that'll be a really nice um depth actually um some, sometimes those planter boxes you know they're they're just really they're like, like about five seven inches deep or whatever and i'm thinking oh my gosh you know or eight maybe eight inches or not feet when i say that inches um and i needed i wanted something that was you know quite a bit deeper so that the roots had a chance to spread out and just uh, really grab hold so anyway I, I believe it's i believe it's 10 inches again i'll put it up on the top of the screen if, if i'm in correct so I can clarify uh, for you guys what it is but anyway um, these are the um, Nantucket boxes and I purchased them through Wayfair and um, they had just so many different boxes to choose from that um, it, it was almost very very difficult but once I saw these um, I, I, it was just kind of a, a, a no-brainer they um, actually let me grab the camera here so I can show you guys a little closer up what they actually look like um, they have, I'm going to actually go down here at this end. If you look, they actually, they bow out just a little bit, which I thought was really, really nice because it gave a little bit more room on the inside of the box with that bow. And then down um, on the front of the box, it has um, a really, really simple uh, raised panel, which I thought was really, really, again, really, really simple and very, very pretty. Now, these boxes um, are actually um, self-watering and that um, that made me very excited to get something like that because um, actually one one main reason if we when not if but when we go on vacation I love the idea of not having to um, have somebody come over and do any watering for me because I have quite a bit around here and little by little my husband and I are trying to get in front of it where we're adding a little bit more when it comes to drip irrigation in our flower beds and when I saw that this was self watering I thought, you know what, that is really, that'll be a huge benefit to me because it'll be one less pot that I'm going to have to um, worry myself with. And um, actually, I'm going to grab the camera one more time and show you the coolest thing. Now, you'll see this hole right here. This hole right here was not actually here. In the directions in this box, it said that you should go ahead and take a three-quarter inch drill bit and drill a hole and it came complete with this plug. And I thought that was really nice because all you have to do is fill the box from that hole and go ahead and just cap it up. And then it just, it made it nice. The hole was just you know covered up and it's all nice and clean. There's no ugly hole sticking out. But when you go ahead and you fill that box up, it fills all down inside here in the reservoir. And it has two really, really nice uh, drainage holes. That way, if it gets, you know, a little too much water, if it comes up over top, it'll just drain out um, of the bottom. And that's perfectly fine. And uh, but so anyway, I thought that was really um, a very nice um, that was a nice perk getting a window box that actually um, was I think they're coming out quite a bit more with the with the window boxes like this um, and even just regular containers that are um, self-watering so that was a, that was something that really kind of stood out for me uh, as far as buying something that will be uh, you know helpful to me when we go on vacation and it'll be kind of nice maybe it'll be something that I won't even really have to concern myself a whole lot with the box even when we are here by just filling up this reservoir and um, I'm kind of curious to see how long we can go in between waterings but anyway that was that's kind of it in a nutshell um, the boxes are just really really pretty and I'm just so anxious to get them all planted up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get everything ready here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant this box up and you guys can just plant along with me, okay?
All right, y'all, what do you think? I love it. It turned out so, so nice. I never I'm doing stuff like this exactly how it's going to turn out. It is, I, I feel like all I do is complain about our South Florida heat. I am like dripping wet. Again, it's like 7.30 in the evening time and the air is just so thick you can cut it with a knife. But because again, planning things for fall, it's like, really? <laughs> I feel like I'm planning things for the summertime. But anyway, you guys absolutely love it. I think it turned out really, really pretty. And I just, I love these creeping fig, the way they come over. A lot of people use, I mean, I can't remember the name of it, Creeping Jenny, I believe. I don't ever have very good luck with those. It seems like when I grow those, they always um, they always rot for me. So I'm going to try to see what I can do about uh, figuring out how to grow a Creeping Jenny. That just seems to be a real battle for me. But these Creeping Fig, um, they seem to be a little bit easier for me to grow. So anyway, um, but with the Creeping Fig hanging over, and then my, um, my begonia, the Sophia begonia, the pretty striking leaves that are just kind of hanging down in front, the elephant ear poly that are kind of hanging over here, the chartreuse sweet potato, and the true, or I'm sorry, the two Dracaena uh, key cordylines. Um, and oh, don't forget the juncus that's back here too. I may, I'm not sure, I have two other juncus. I may put another one in there just to kind of make that a little bit thicker. I'm not real sure. I'm going to maybe have to look at it for another day. But I may just go ahead and pop another one of those junkets in there. But overall, y'all, I think it looks really, really nice. And I'm super happy. So finally got number two done here in the transformation of the front porch. The third video, third and final video for the transformation is going to be what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting out um, actually a container pot. I'm going to fill it um, full of something. I don't know exactly what yet. And then I'm going to just kind of do um, some decoration up here for fall. So anyway, um, if you like this video, um, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, also the notification button. That way it will remind you when I go to upload a number Number three, you want to be sure not to miss that video as well. So anyway, I just, again, I love doing stuff like this. It is so much fun, even though it's like burning hot out here. But I know that fall is around the corner, even for us here in South Florida. And I'm really looking forward to going into the fall and winter months um, to get a little bit of reprieve from this heat. So anyway, uh, don't forget, uh, number three will be coming out here, hopefully in the next week, where we do the uh, complete transformation of the front porch with the full decoration. So until the next video, guys, bye for now.